Breaking news at this hour, we have just learned of the passing of the beloved entertainer Betty White at the age of 99. She was America's golden girl, a comedic icon who brought laughter to millions for over eight decades. Ladies and gentlemen, Betty White! Betty White was more than just an actress. She was a national treasure. Come and get it! But even legends have their final curtain call. While the world knows Betty lived to the incredible age of 99, few know the details of her final hours. Thank you all for your love and support over the years. Now, for the first time ever, we reveal unseen footage offering a glimpse into Betty White's last day. Get ready for an emotional journey as we remember the life and legacy of the one and only Betty White. Early life in the heart of Oak Park, Illinois, Betty Marion White was born on January 17, 1922. She later clarified that Betty was her legal name and not a shortened version of Elizabeth, as some people had assumed. She was the only child of housewife Christine Tess and lighting company executive Horace Logan White. Her father was from Michigan. White's maternal grandfather was Greek, her paternal grandfather was Danish, both of her grandmothers were Canadians of English descent, and her other ancestry included Welsh. When she was one year old, her family moved to Alhambra, California, and later to Los Angeles during the Great Depression. To make extra money, her father built crystal radios and sold them wherever he could. Since it was the height of the Depression, and hardly anyone had a sizable income, he would trade the radios for other goods, which sometimes included dogs. White was educated in Beverly Hills, where she attended Horace Mann Elementary School and Beverly Hills High School, graduating from the latter in 1939. Her interest in wildlife was sparked by family vacations to the Sierra Nevada. She initially aspired to become a forest ranger, but was unable to do so because women were not allowed to serve as rangers at the time. She instead pursued an interest in writing, she wrote and played the lead in a graduation play at Horace Mann School and discovered her interest in performing. Inspired by her idols Jeanette MacDonald and Nelson Eddy, she decided to pursue a career as an actress. This marked the beginning of her journey to becoming a beloved icon in the entertainment industry. Just a month after finishing high school, Betty's adventurous spirit led her to a unique opportunity. She and a friend performed songs from The Merry Widow on an experimental TV show. This was back in 1939, when television was still a new medium. Betty wasn't just a singer, she also worked as a model, and her very first acting job was at the Bliss Hayden Little Theater. Career During and After World War II Then World War II started, and everything changed. Betty, always eager to help, volunteered for the American Women's Voluntary Services. Her job involved driving a large truck filled with supplies for soldiers up to the Hollywood Hills. She also participated in putting on shows for the troops before they went off to fight. Reflecting on those times, Betty described it as a strange and confusing period. The war upended the world, but she did her part to support the troops and bring a bit of joy to their lives. With the war over, Betty was eager to return to acting. She visited all the movie studios, hoping to land a role, but was turned down by each one. They said she wasn't photogenic enough, meaning she didn't look good on camera. Undeterred, Betty decided to try radio instead. She began taking small jobs on the radio, reading commercials, playing minor parts, and even creating crowd noises in the background. It wasn't glamorous, she earned only about $5 per show, but her determination to succeed was unwavering. Betty was a hard worker, always ready to try something new. She even sang on a radio show for free just for the experience. She appeared on popular shows like Blondie, The Great Gilder's Leave, and This Is Your FBI. Then, in 1949, Betty made the transition to television. She co-hosted a live variety show called Hollywood on Television with Al Jarvis. This was significant because it was one of the first daily live TV shows in Los Angeles. Betty proved to be a natural on camera, and her bubbly personality quickly won over viewers. 
When Al Jarvis left the show in 1952, Betty became the sole host of Hollywood on television. Hosting a live TV show for five and a half hours a day, six days a week, for four years straight was no small feat. But Betty embraced the challenge. She was fearless, always ready with a joke or a song, and showcased her versatility as a performer by singing during every show. Her talent and dedication did not go unnoticed. In 1951, Betty received her first Emmy nomination for Best Actress on Television, competing against notable names like Judith Anderson, Helen Hayes, and Imogene Coca. Although she did not win, the nomination was a significant honor and demonstrated her growing prominence in the television world. This was a time when the Emmy Awards recognized an actress's overall work rather than a specific show, and Betty's nomination highlighted her emerging influence as a pioneering woman in the entertainment industry. The Betty White Show Betty's star was rising, and from 1952 to 1954, she had her own show called The Betty White Show. It was a daily talk and variety show where she could chat with guests and showcase her singing and comedic talents. This time, she was in charge producing the show and even hiring a female director, which was quite rare at the time. Betty was committed to giving everyone a chance, so she hired a talented African-American tap dancer named Arthur Duncan as a regular on her show. This was groundbreaking, as it marked the first time a black performer had a regular spot on a national variety show. However, not everyone was pleased. Some TV stations in the South, where racial segregation was still a significant issue, threatened to boycott the show if Arthur Duncan wasn't removed. Betty refused to give in, telling them, I'm sorry, live with it, and even gave Arthur more screen time. Although the Betty White show initially enjoyed success, it faced frequent time slot changes, leading to declining ratings. By the end of 1954, the show was quietly canceled. Despite its short run, Betty made history by standing up for her beliefs and providing a platform for a talented performer. In the same year she started hosting Hollywood on television, Betty teamed up with friends to create her own production company, Bandy Productions. They transformed popular characters from her show into a new sitcom called Life with Elizabeth. Betty played the lead role of Elizabeth a married woman who frequently found herself in humorous situations. The show was a success, and Betty won a Los Angeles Emmy Award for her performance. At just 28 years old, she had full control over the show, making decisions both on and off camera, despite still living with her parents. Betty described the show as focusing on real life rather than being fancy or trendy. Many of the humorous stories were based on actual events involving her, her co-star Del Moore, or the writers. The comedy resonated with audiences because it was relatable. Betty's talents extended beyond her own show. She also appeared in TV commercials broadcast live in Los Angeles, including a memorable ad for Dr. Ross Dog Food, which she performed with her signature charm. She even made a guest appearance on the popular show The Millionaire, playing a diner owner who unexpectedly receives a million dollars. Betty's career was on the rise, and she was becoming a household name. Date with the Angels After life with Elizabeth ended, Betty landed a new role as Vicky Angel on the ABC sitcom Date with the Angels. The show was meant to explore Vicky's daydreams and fantasies, similar to the play Dream Girl. However, the show's sponsor disapproved of the fantasy elements and demanded their removal. This change left Betty frustrated, and she later admitted it was the only time she considered quitting a show. Despite her dissatisfaction, the network refused to release her from her contract, forcing her to continue for 13 more weeks. Instead of struggling with the sitcom, Betty returned to her strength, hosting. Thus, the Betty White Show made a comeback, airing to fulfill the remainder of her contract with ABC. Although Date with the Angels failed to impress viewers or critics, Betty's fans appreciated her return to familiar territory on her own show, demonstrating her ability to rebound from setbacks. While Date with the Angels wasn't a great experience overall, it did lead to a significant personal connection, 
Betty developed a close friendship with Lucille Ball, the star of I Love Lucy. Both shows were filmed at the same studio, allowing Betty and Lucille to frequently cross paths. They quickly bonded, finding common ground in their experiences as women succeeding in the male-dominated television industry. Their friendship extended beyond professional support, encompassing discussions on personal issues such as divorces, health problems, and the loss of loved ones. They also enjoyed a friendly rivalry on game shows, often competing against each other. Despite the playful competition, their relationship was deeply rooted in mutual respect and encouragement. This strong friendship endured for years, illustrating that even a challenging show can lead to valuable and enduring relationships. In July 1959, Betty added another accomplishment to her career with her professional stage debut in the play Third Best Sport in Pennsylvania. This role marked a new challenge for Betty. By the 1960s, Betty White had become a well-known figure on television. Appearances on Game Shows she was a regular guest on popular game shows and talk shows, including The Tonight Show with both Jack Parr and later Johnny Carson. Betty had a particular fondness for the game show Password, where she made numerous appearances between 1961 and 1975. It was on the set of Password that she met Alan Ludden, the show's host. Betty continued to be a frequent guest on various versions of Password, including Password Plus, Super Password, and Million Dollar Password. Her game show appearances extended beyond Password, as she also appeared on other popular programs, such as What's My Line, To Tell the Truth, I've Got a Secret, Match Game, and Pyramid. Her natural charm and quick wit made her a standout on these shows. Betty's talents were not confined to television. In 1962, she made her big screen debut in Advise and Consent, portraying a fictional senator. A talk show host and historian later remarked on the significance of Betty taking on a strong female role during the early 1960s. In 1963, Betty embraced a new challenge with a live theater production of The King and I, playing the lead role of Anna Leon Owens. This role showcased her versatility, as she portrayed a British schoolteacher traveling to Siam, now Thailand, to educate the king's children. Betty's popularity soared, and in the 1960s, she was offered a significant opportunity to be an anchor on the morning show today. Despite the prestige of the position, Betty declined the offer because it required relocating to New York City, a move she was reluctant to make. The role eventually went to Barbara Walters, who became a prominent news anchor. Even without today, Betty remained incredibly active. For 19 years, she was the beloved host of the Rose Parade on NBC, working alongside Roy Neal and later Lorne Green. She also continued to make regular appearances on late-night talk shows and various game shows, charming audiences with her wit and warmth. Betty in the Mary Tyler Moore Show in 1973, Betty landed a role on the hit show The Mary Tyler Moore Show. She played Sue Ann Nivens, a character known for being man-hungry. It was a fun role for Betty, though she found the character to be a bit icky sweet. Sue Ann epitomized the stereotypical woman of the era, sugary and passive, a portrayal Betty often poked fun at in her own way. The show's producers were so impressed with Betty's performance that they made Sue Ann a regular character after another actress, Valerie Harper, left the show. One of the funniest aspects of Sue Ann was the stark contrast between her on-camera persona and her real-life personality. On The Happy Homemaker, Sue Ann was all smiles and sweetness, but off-camera she was sassy and cynical. This contrast added a layer of humor to the character. Betty's role on The Mary Tyler Moore Show was a massive success. She won two Emmy Awards in a row for playing Sue Ann in 1975 and 1976. Interestingly, the show's creators were initially hesitant to hire Betty because of her friendship with Mary Tyler Moore. They worried it might be awkward if Betty wasn't right for the part. However, their concerns proved unfounded. Betty and Mary were already best friends, and their friendship only strengthened through their work together. 
They even enjoyed double dates with their husbands, Grant Tinker and Alan Ludden. In 1975, NBC made a surprising decision to replace Betty as the hostess of the Tournament of Roses parade, citing her strong association with the Mary Tyler Moore show on CBS. Betty admitted it was tough to see someone else take over her cherished parade, but she didn't let it deter her. Instead, she moved to CBS and became the hostess of their Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade for the next 10 years. After the Mary Tyler Moore show ended in 1977, CBS offered Betty her own sitcom, also called The Betty White Show. This was her fourth sitcom, where she co-starred with John Hillerman and Georgia Engel. Unfortunately, the show struggled against the popular Monday Night Football and was canceled after one season. Despite this setback, Betty stayed active. She made frequent appearances on The Carol Burnett Show and The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson, showcasing her comedic talent in their sketches. Betty also began acting in TV movies and miniseries like With This Ring and The Best Place to Be. In 1983, she made history again by becoming the first woman to win a Daytime Emmy Award for Outstanding Game Show Host, an accolade she earned for her work on the NBC show Just Men. Due to her extensive work on game shows, she earned the nickname First Lady of Game Shows. Betty's Career Jackpot In 1985, Betty's career soared with a show that would become a television legend, The Golden Girls. This sitcom followed the lives of four older women living together in Miami, Florida. Betty played the lovable and naive Rose Nyland, a woman from St. Olaf, Minnesota, who always had a funny story to tell. The show was an instant hit, with viewers falling in love with Betty, B. Arthur, Estelle Getty, and Rue McClanahan. The Golden Girls ran for seven seasons, and Betty won an Emmy Award in the very first season. In fact, she was nominated for an Emmy every year the show was on air. Interestingly, Betty had previously worked with Rue McClanahan on a show called Mama's Family, but the Golden Girls was their biggest success together, creating a bond that lasted for years. However, not everything was sunshine and roses behind the scenes. Betty had a somewhat difficult relationship with her co-star, B. Arthur. They weren't always on the best of terms, both on and off the set. Betty's positive attitude sometimes annoyed B, who could be a bit grumpy. Despite this, the show's magic was undeniable, and their on-screen chemistry entertained millions of viewers. The Golden Girls became more than just a sitcom. It became a cultural phenomenon. It tackled important issues like aging, friendship, and family with humor and heart. Betty's portrayal of Rose, the sweet and sometimes silly friend, solidified her place as a comedy legend. In 2009, Betty lost her beloved husband, Alan Ludden. It was a heartbreaking time and she said, I knew it would hurt. I just didn't know it would hurt this much. Even though she and B. Arthur sometimes clashed, Betty always valued her time on The Golden Girls and had deep respect for her co-stars and the show's success. Interestingly, Betty wasn't originally intended to play Rose. She was first offered the role of Blanche, the flirty Southern Belle, while Rue McClanahan was supposed to play Rose. However, the director suggested they switch roles, thinking it would be fun for them to try something new. Betty was initially worried about playing the naive Rose, but the director explained that Rose wasn't just naive, she was terminally naive. Betty joked that if you told Rose you were so hungry you could eat a horse, she'd call the Animal Protection Society. Sadly, The Golden Girls ended in 1992 when B. Arthur decided to leave the show. However, Betty, Rue, and Estelle Getty weren't ready to say goodbye to their characters. They brought Rose, Blanche, and Sophia back for a new sitcom called The Golden Palace. Unfortunately, the new show lasted only one season. But Betty wasn't done with Rose just yet. She made special guest appearances on other NBC shows like Empty Nest and Nurses, bringing a touch of the Golden Girls magic to those series as well. After the Golden Palace ended, 
Betty didn't slow down. She appeared on various shows like Suddenly Susan, The Practice, and Yes, Dear, earning even more Emmy nominations. In 1996, she won an Emmy for her hilarious guest appearance on The John Larroquette Show, where she played a diva-like version of herself trying to write her memoir. Betty's presence extended beyond television. She also starred in movies like Lake Placid and Bringing Down the House, showcasing her comedic range on the big screen, expanding into soap operas and legal dramas, expanding into soap operas and legal dramas. In 2006, Betty joined the soap opera The Bold and the Beautiful, playing the long-lost mother of the show's main character. She also began a recurring role in ABC's Boston Legal from 2005 to 2008 as the calculating, blackmailing, gossip monger Catherine Piper, a role she originally played as a guest star on The Practice in 2004. This role was a continuation of a character she first portrayed on The Practice, demonstrating her ability to play a villain as effectively as she played a sweetheart. Betty even returned to her game show roots, making appearances on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno, The Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson, and a new version of Password called Million Dollar Password. In 2008, she reunited with her The Mary Tyler Moore Show co-stars on Oprah's reunion special, rekindling the fond memories of that beloved sitcom. Betty used her fame to support animal welfare, appearing in commercials for PetMed Express and showcasing her passion for animal rights. One of her most memorable roles came in 2009 when she starred in the romantic comedy The Proposal alongside Sandra Bullock and Ryan Reynolds. Betty played Ryan Reynolds's sassy grandmother, stealing scenes with her sharp one-liners and impeccable comedic timing. The movie was a huge success, demonstrating that Betty's charm and humor could captivate audiences of all ages. In the same year, Betty featured in a Super Bowl commercial for Snickers Candy Bar. The ad quickly became a fan favorite, clinching the top spot on the Super Bowl ad meter. Career Resurgence and Hosting Milestones Betty's career was on fire, proving she remained a formidable talent well into her 80s. Following her memorable Snickers Super Bowl commercial, Betty's career surged forward. A grassroots campaign on Facebook called Betty White to Host SNL Please began in January 2010. The group was approaching 500,000 members when NBC confirmed on March 11, 2010, that White would in fact host Saturday Night Live on May 8th. The appearance made her, at age 88, the oldest person to host the show, beating Miskel Spillman, the winner of SNL's Anybody Can Host contest, who was 80 when she hosted in 1977. In her opening monologue, White thanked Facebook and joked that she didn't know what Facebook was, and now that I do know what it is, I have to say, it sounds like a huge waste of time. The audience loved her performance and Betty even won another Emmy Award for it. But her remarkable journey didn't stop there. In June 2010, White took on the role of Elka Ostrovsky, the house caretaker on TV Land's original sitcom Hot in Cleveland, along with Valerie Bertinelli, Jane Leaves, and Wendy Malick. Hot in Cleveland was TV Land's first attempt at a first-run scripted comedy. The channel has rerun other sitcoms since its debut. White was only meant to appear in the pilot of the show, but was asked to stay on for the entire series. In 2011, she was nominated for a Primetime Emmy Award for Outstanding Supporting Actress in a Comedy Series for her role as Elka, but lost to Julie Bowen for Modern Family. The series ran for six seasons, a total of 128 episodes, with the hour-long final episode airing on June 3, 2015, Betty's resurgence continued into 2011 when she starred in The Lost Valentine, a touching film on the Hallmark Channel. The movie was a significant hit, achieving the highest ratings for a Hallmark film in four years and dominating the primetime slot on its air date. Betty kept the momentum going by hosting and producing Betty White's Off Their Rockers from 2012 to 2014. The show, which featured seniors playing pranks on younger people, garnered Betty three more Emmy nominations. 
Betty's talents extended beyond acting. In 2011, she released a calendar showcasing photos of her throughout her career and with her beloved animals. She also launched a clothing line featuring her face on the shirts, with all proceeds supporting animal charities. First Grammy Award In 2012, Betty won her first Grammy Award for Best Spoken Word Recording for her best-selling book, If You Ask Me. She also received the UCLA Jack Benny Award for Comedy, a significant recognition of her contributions to television comedy. To add to the festivities, she was roasted by the New York Friars Club, showcasing her ability to both take and deliver a joke. A television special, Betty White's 90th Birthday Party, aired on NBC a day before her birthday on January 16, 2012. The show featured appearances of many stars whom White worked with over the years, as well as a message from then-sitting President Barack Obama. In January 2013, NBC once again celebrated White's birthday with a TV special featuring celebrity friends, including former President Bill Clinton. The special aired on February 5th. In 2018, White's career was celebrated in a PBS documentary called Betty White, First Lady of Television. The documentary was filmed over a period of 10 years and featured archived footage and interviews from colleagues and friends. In 2019, White appeared in Pixar's Toy Story 4, providing the voice of Betty White, a toy tiger that was named after her. The other toys she shared a scene with were named and played by Carol Burnett, Carl Reiner, and Mel Brooks. White commented that, it was wonderful the way they incorporated our names into the characters, and I'm a sucker for animals, so the tiger was perfect. Betty White, a celebration. In December 2021, before White's death, it was announced that a new documentary-style film about her, Betty White, a celebration would be released in U.S. theaters on what would have been her 100th birthday, January 17, 2022. It featured a cast of friends, including Ryan Reynolds, Tina Fey, Robert Redford, Lynn manuel Miranda, Clint Eastwood, Morgan Freeman, Jay Leno, Carol Burnett, Craig Ferguson, Jimmy Kimmel, Valerie Bertinelli, James Corden, Wendy Malick, and Jennifer Love Hewitt. In addition to the planned documentary, People Magazine featured her as the cover story of its January 10th, 2022, newsstand publication and a separate commemorative edition to celebrate the anticipated milestone, which were released days before her death. Following White's death, producers Steve Betcher and Mike Trinkling of the event distributors Fathom Events announced in a Facebook post that the pre-filmed production would be going ahead as scheduled. Awards and Achievements a 2011 poll conducted by Reuters and Ipsos revealed that White was considered the most popular and most trusted celebrity among Americans, beating the likes of Denzel Washington, Sandra Bullock, and Tom Hanks. In 2017, after 70 years in the industry, White was invited to become a member of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. At age 95, this made her the oldest new member at the time White was the first woman to have received an Emmy in all performing comedic categories and also holds the record for longest span between Emmy nominations for performances. Her first was in 1951 and her last was in 2014, a span of over 60 years. She also won three American Comedy Awards, including a Lifetime Achievement Award in 1990 and two viewers for Quality Television Awards. She was inducted into the Television Hall of Fame in 1995 and has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame at Hollywood Boulevard alongside the star of her late husband, Alan Ludden. In 2009, she also received the TCA Career Achievement Award from the Television Critics Association. Her career as a writer. Betty White was not only a beloved actress, but also an accomplished author. Over the years, she wrote several books. Her writing career started with Betty White's Pet Love, How Pets Take Care of Us, and continued with Betty White in Person in 1987. In 1991, she released The Leading Lady, Dinah's Story, co-authored with Tom Sullivan. 
Her memoir, Here We Go Again, My Life in Television, came out in 1995, offering a look at her TV career. In 2008, she and Sullivan wrote, Together, a novel of shared vision. White's 2011 books included If You Ask Me, and Of Course You Won't, and Betty and Friends, My Life at the Zoo. She won a Grammy Award in 2012 for the spoken word recording of If You Ask Me as well. Personal life. During World War II, while Betty was volunteering, she met a dashing Air Force pilot named Dick Barker. After the war, they married and moved to his chicken farm in Ohio. Betty, accustomed to the bustling life of Los Angeles, struggled with farm life, and they divorced within a year. Betty then returned to California. In 1947, Betty married again, this time to Hollywood talent agent Lane Allen. However, they had differing visions for the future. Lane wanted to start a family while Betty was focused on her career. Their marriage ended after two years. In 1961, Betty met the love of her life, Alan Ludden, when she appeared as a guest on his game show, Password. It was love at first sight. Betty was captivated by Alan's enthusiasm and zest for life. Despite his own grief over the recent loss of his wife and his three children who had lost their mother, Alan and Betty quickly formed a close bond. Their connection was so strong that Alan proposed within weeks of meeting her. Betty, still hesitant after two divorces, was initially reluctant. Alan, however, was persistent. When Betty declined a diamond ring, Alan wore it on a chain around his neck, refusing to give up on their love. In 1963, Alan won her over with a touching gesture, a white stuffed bunny with earrings hidden in its ears. Betty couldn't resist his charm and accepted his proposal. She later reflected that she wished they had married sooner, expressing, I wasted all that time we could have been together. Although already friends, Betty and Alan faced challenges adjusting to married life. Betty missed her home in California, but their mutual love and joy made it work. They enjoyed a simple, happy life filled with barbecues, dancing, and laughter. Betty often told Johnny Carson that she had never been happier in her life. Tragically, their happiness was cut short when Alan was diagnosed with terminal stomach cancer. Despite the devastating blow, Betty stayed strong for him, balancing her professional commitments with hospital visits. As Alan's condition worsened and he fell into a coma, Betty remained by his side until he passed away just two months before their 18th wedding anniversary. Even after Alan's death, Betty never forgot her love for him. She never remarried, humorously noting that her first two marriages were just rehearsals for the real thing. She often said, if you've had the best, who needs the rest? Although they did not have children together, Betty did not regret their decision as she focused on her career and felt she could not give both motherhood and her work the attention they deserved. Years after Alan's death, Betty kept a photo of him by her bed, blowing him a kiss every morning and another one to the sky every night. She felt their love was so enduring that it was as if they were still on their honeymoon. While Betty dated others after Alan, she never found anyone who compared. When she passed away in 2021, her close friend and agent noted that her love for Alan never faded. She wasn't afraid of dying, believing she would be reunited with him. Her last word was reportedly, Alan. Betty, who passed just a few weeks shy of her 100th birthday, attributed her long and fulfilling life to her positive outlook, which she believed she inherited from her mother, helping her to always find the good in every situation. Hobbies Betty's joyful spirit extended to her hobbies as well. She delighted in playing poker with her friends and wasn't shy about enjoying a vodka cocktail. Betty knew how to have fun and savor every moment of life. However, Betty's greatest passion was her love for animals. She spoke about her pets with immense affection and was a staunch advocate for treating animals with kindness and respect. For over 40 years, Betty was a trustee of the Greater Los Angeles Zoo Association. She used her celebrity status to raise both funds and awareness for animal conservation and welfare. Betty was deeply involved in events and initiatives at the Los Angeles Zoo, continually supporting their mission with unwavering commitment. 
Her advocacy extended beyond the Los Angeles Zoo. Betty also worked with other notable animal organizations, such as the Morris Animal Foundation and the African Wildlife Foundation. She generously donated both money and time to help animals, not just in the United States, but globally. Additionally, she hosted a show called Pet Set, where she discussed famous people's pets and other animal-related topics, further showcasing her dedication to animal causes. And with all that she had done for the society, she was awarded for it accordingly. The American Veterinary Medical Association awarded White with its Humane Award in 1987 for her charitable work with animals. The City of Los Angeles further honored her for her philanthropic work with animals in 2006 with a bronze commemorative plaque near the gorilla exhibit at the Los Angeles Zoo. The City of Los Angeles named her Ambassador to the Animals at the dedication ceremony. In October 2011, White was awarded an honorary degree and a white doctor's coat by Washington State University at the Washington State Veterinary Medical Association's Centennial Gala in Yakima, Washington. But that's not all. Betty was also an activist. Stand Against Racial Inequality In 1954, as The Betty White Show became national across the United States, White was criticized by many in the southern states for having Arthur Duncan, a black tap dancer, on her variety show and was asked to remove him. In the 2018 documentary, Betty White, First Lady of Television, White recalled threats to take the show off air if we didn't get rid of Arthur because he was black. She refused, saying, he stays, live with it. In 2017, 63 years after the show was canceled, Duncan appeared as a surprise guest on the series premiere of the reality talent series Little Big Shots, Forever Young, where he performed and reunited with White, later thanking her again for her support. LGBT right activist Betty was also a staunch LGBTQ plus rights advocate. She famously said in 2010, If a couple has been together all that time, and there are gay relationships that are more solid than some heterosexual ones, I think it's fine if they want to get married. I don't know how people can get so anti-something. Mind your own business, take care of your affairs, and don't worry about other people so much. In a 2011 interview, she revealed that she always knew her close friend Liberace was gay, and that she sometimes accompanied him to premieres to help him hide it. Though Betty White is gone, her impact on comedy and entertainment will never be forgotten. What will you remember most about this incredible woman? Let us know in the comments, and subscribe for more celebrations of legendary lives.